all the men in today's program have found their own way of dealing with difficult circumstances. Father of four, Peter Calavati, has been diagnosed with a terminal illness, but he's reaping the benefits of forging really close relationships with all his family. Pete Calavati is living with a terminal illness. But in dealing with motor neuron disease, he has discovered the true meaning of his life. This is the song the father of four wrote for his daughter's wedding. All through the years, I watched you grow. We shared some tears. The former policeman was always heavily involved in his children's lives. Now his entire family has rallied to support him through his illness. I am doing a lot for Peter now and so that's changed, it's changed the relationship on one level where I'm becoming the caregiver I guess and I am doing the showering and, and shaving and helping him dress and so on and that's a choice that we're making. We can have somebody come and do that for us but we're wanting me at this moment to do that. That might change in the future but um, I don't look on that as being a bind. I look on that as something that I want to do for Peter and we're spending more time together. The important thing now is just making the most of the time that we have. We don't want to have any regrets and we don't want to miss out on time that we could spend with Dad. Yeah, so I just, um, I've sort of taken the approach that, you know, we could go at any time. Um, so just enjoying the time that we've got, um, regardless of whether Dad was in the situation or not. Still love having these sort of family moments and being at home with, um, with family. Peter first realised something was wrong two years ago, when he didn't have enough energy to complete a shift at work. A former champion hurdler and regular gym goer, he couldn't understand what was happening. He was also experiencing pain in his chest. just said to me, um, do you know what motor neuron disease is? And I said, well, is that the muscle wasting disease, which is usually terminal? And he said, yes, that's right. And I was sort of pushing Pete to go and find, go to other specialists and find out exactly what is happening for you. So when we were referred to the neurologist by the cardiologist, it was for me a, let's just tick that box off and then we'll go to a hypnotist or whatever. <laughs> so when we went to the neurologist and he came back with this uh, diagnosis or preliminary diagnosis of MND, um, and although I didn't know a lot of information about it, the thing that struck me was the two to th three year life expectancy and I couldn't speak, I just clammed up and we left the office. His family's response was to immediately gather around him but what happened was um, there was a huge outpouring of love um, from all my brothers and sisters. And I felt like I was, I described it many times as a, surrounded by a circle of love. And it was fantastic. It was just a, a tremendous high. And I wished everybody could experience that. MND can move quite rapidly. Pete's arms and hands began to lose mobility well before his legs. He now uses a power chair. His left side is much weaker than his right. Amongst all the changes, Leanne's needed to find her own tranquility. Creating a garden that Peter could enjoy has been her outlet. It is a project for me to try and make our home as um, enjoyable a place as we possibly can for Pete because he spends most of his time here. I've really enjoyed learning how to make concrete, believe it or not, <laughs> but I feel really proud of the fact that, hey, I, I laid that concrete. <laughs> and it is a place where Pete could look at from the conservatory and enjoy. Just an area where I can relax and just let my thoughts wander. 
and when I've had enough of looking into the pond I can look around and see the hills in the distance and the scenery is absolutely amazing. We'll sit and talk with a glass of wine and uh, just enjoy the moment and sometimes we'll sit quietly, sometimes we'll just be chatting about all sorts of things that might be happening. It's quality time and it's nice just doing something different. As time goes by, Pete's movements are increasingly restricted. In recent months I've had a few falls and um, believe me, when you don't have your arms to break your fall, or no strength in your hands and shoulders and things, and chest, there, you don't want to fall <laughs> from my height, which used to be six foot two, probably a bit shorter now <laughs> because of age. But um, yeah, you hit that ground pretty hard and uh, it's, it's pretty nasty. The guitar has featured in the Kalavati household. The kids inherited Pete's love of music. Now it's something that draws them together every week. I'm an optimist and I always try to look on the bright side of everything. So I guess when you look at the terminal side of it, I'm thinking, well, I'm still alive today. That's all good. <laughs> what happens tomorrow, we'll worry about that when it happens. And that's how I approach each day.